Hey everybody, Stevie X here, and today I continue future World of Warships content speculation by taking a step away from Pan American speculation, though don't fret, I am working on the third and supposedly final video in that series as well, and we talk about another new nation branch that was recently leaked to the public, but has been somewhat overshadowed by the news that followed it, namely the aircraft carrier rework and submarines. And that will be the announcement of the Pan-European branch, a topic that has been very widely discussed in the World of Warships forums and in other WoWs communities, particularly of what countries and therefore the ships we could see in this branch. Now, as we've come to see, three nations were officially confirmed for it, with more to come in the future, namely... Poland, the Netherlands, and Austria-Hungary. And what's interesting about the first of those three nations that I mentioned is that we already have the first pan-European ship in the game already, and have for a couple of years now. And that ship would be this, the Tier 7 Premium Polish Destroyer, the ORP Bliskiewicz. And I do apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, as I do not speak Polish. For those unfamiliar with the history of this ship, I'll give you a brief rundown. Bliskiewicz, which means lightning in Polish, was the second of two British-built Grom-class destroyers custom-built for the Polish Navy, considered to be two of the most powerful destroyers in Europe by the time World War II came around, with their performance being com incomparable to that of the Royal Navy's famous tribal-class destroyers. Both Bliskiewicz and Grom were evacuated to Britain after the German invasion of Poland as part of a British and Polish agreement to have the ships serve in the Royal Navy if Poland was invaded. They made it out of the Baltic Sea when the invasion began, albeit barely, and while Grom was lost off the coast of Norway in 1940, Bliskiewicz was served with distinction, even helping out in Operation Dynamo, the evacuation of Dunkirk in 1940, though she would mostly be on convoy escort duty during the war, escorting 83 in all, and taking part in the Battle of Ushant off the coast of France against German destroyers in June 1944. She's easily the most famous and the most decorated ship in Polish military history, being the only ship to receive Poland's highest military honor, the Virtui Mileri. She's currently on display in Gdynia, Poland on the Baltic Sea, and she's the oldest preserved destroyer in the world. For those that have the ship in game, many would consider her a solid tier 7 destroyer. Her gun power is quite strong, featuring seven 120mm Bullforce made guns, able to put a good amount of shots down range. And she has a solid torpedo armament with two triple 533mm torpedo tubes with an 8km range. That, plus her awesome speed of 39 knots, make her a pretty dynamic and rewarding ship that players who are used to DD gameplay would likely enjoy. I know I can have some fun times with this ship, and I'm not too much of a DD player compared to other people, though I am getting better at it. If you want to pick this ship up, I last saw it available in the premium shop for around $25, so that's a pretty good price for a solid and unique premium DD to add to your collection. So, with the possibly shocking news that this nation branch already exists in a different form, let's take a look at some other Polish warships that we could possibly see in game alongside the Bliskiewicz. Aside from Bliskiewicz's sister ship, Grom, which if they create a pan-European DD line could possibly work as a tech tree tier 7, there are a few other Polish destroyers as well as a couple of cruisers that could well be featured in game. First, let's take a look at destroyers, starting off with the Witcher class destroyers. Not related to anything involving the Witcher game series, the Witcher class was a class of two French-built destroyers, which were essentially modified versions of the French Navy's Barros class destroyers, which we actually knew in game a few years ago as the French destroyer Cyclone, which was seen in the original running of the Dunkirk evacuation scenario about a year ago. One interesting note is that the Witcher herself holds the distinction of being the first ship sunk during World War II, as she was sunk by German bombers a mere two days after the war began during the Polish invasion. Her sister, Bozra, on the other hand, did make it out of the Baltic without becoming bomber food for the Luftwaffe, and along with the Grom and the Bliskiewicz, took part in operations around Norway as well as convoy escorts throughout the war. She would later become a museum ship in Poland after she was decommissioned in 1960. 60, but she would be scrapped in 1977 when the Bliskiewicz was finally decommissioned the previous year and replaced her as the museum ship in Gdynia. 
Looking over her, we have a solid hybrid destroyer that could also be seen, in the broad strokes anyway, in the French DD line that could work at tier 5 in my view. Main armament are four single mounts of 130mm guns, along with two triple 550mm torpedo tubes. AA will be made up of two single 40mm guns and four 13.2mm Hotchkiss machine guns. Top speed, 33.8 knots. Overall, this looks like a very solid hybrid or gunboat destroyer that would also serve as a basis for a ship that we could see in the French DD line, and for a tier 5, it could, hit, it could fit the hybrid or DD gunboat mold pretty well. As for other classes of Polish destroyers, while none were actually built for the Polish Navy, there were several ships, particularly from France and Britain, that served in the Polish fleet during the war. While the French DDs were more of the Barros class ships, which were essentially the same as the Witcher, there were several Royal Navy destroyers that were transferred over and flew the Polish flag during the war, such as the Garland, the former G class HMS Garland, which being a sister of HMS Gallant would likely be a tier 6 as well as two possible Tier 7 candidates, the M-Class Orkan, formerly the HMS Myrmidon, and the N-Class Piorun, formerly the HMS Nerissa. While it may be harder to justify the latter two, especially since we already have the Grom that could fill a Tier 7 role with a fairly unique design, these two are certainly on the table as possible pan-European candidates if they so desire. But aside from destroyers, there is actually a class of cruisers that served with the Polish Navy during the war, albeit it's once again a familiar face. Step forward two former Royal Navy Dane class light cruisers, the ORP Conrad, formerly the HMS Dane herself, as well as the ORP Dragon, formerly the HMS Dragon, funnily enough. To bolster the Polish Navy during the war, the Dragon was transferred to the Polish Navy in 1943 and would later serve along with the British forces in Operation Neptune, which is better known as the D-Day landings at Normandy as part of Operation Overlord, shelling German shore batteries. However, soon afterwards, she was scuttled in July 1944 off the French coast when she was hit by a German Neger man torpedo. Yes, really, and you thought the Japanese were the only ones who did that sort of thing. She was still floating afterwards, but the damage was considered too severe, and she was scuttled as part of an artificial breakwater. After that, the Dane was transferred to the Polish Navy in her place, and was renamed the Conrad after a famous Polish-English writer, believe it or not, and she served for the remainder of the war until she was returned to the Royal Navy in 1946. Being the Dane class, which we know in game was a solid tier 4 cruiser, this ship follows that mold pretty well, with a difference or two compared to the ship we know. Main armament were 5 152mm guns, as well as one 102mm gun, rather than the 6 152s on the Dane in game. Another difference is the fact that torpedo tubes on this one were removed for extra AA, which consists of 8 40mm pom-pom 2-pounders, 3 quadruple Mark 8 2-pounders, and 12 20mm guns. Armor? Haha, <laughs> very funny. This is a British light cruiser. It's paper, with only 76mm of belt armor at the most. Top speed? 29 knots. So this ship does seem like an interesting take on the Danae design that could possibly work at a tier 3 or 4 depending on its overall performance. Unfortunately, that's largely where the story of ships from Poland come to an end. Afterwards, when Poland became a part of the Warsaw Pact in the late 50s, they got ships of Soviet design that featured missile systems, which we know are never getting put in game no matter how crazy wargaming can get. So on that note, let's move away from the icy Baltic Sea to a not quite icy but still cold and stormy North Sea, where we go from one of Europe's newest navies, as the Polish Navy only really existed after Poland regained its independence after the First World War, to one of its oldest, and a nation that I personally hold rather dear to my heart. And that would be the Koniglika Marin, the Royal Netherlands Navy. Being a man who has Dutch blood in me on my father's side, as my family name would probably suggest, along with German blood as well, as well as having extended family living in the Netherlands, I've always wanted to see the Royal Netherlands Navy represented in game at some point, and now we have that chance. Founded in 1488, the Royal Netherlands Navy was there during the height of the Dutch Republic's power in Europe, and in particular, its massive worldwide trading empire during the Age of Exploration and Colonialism, of which the Dutch, along with the Spanish and the Portuguese, were considered the OGs of. 
<laughs> Britain thinks they're the masters of it? They be copying us, yo. While the height of prominence of Dutch naval power was indeed in the 1500s to the 1700s when, he, when it could even put the Royal Navy to shame at times, the Dutch still had an interesting mix of ships as well as ship designs in the 20th century that we could ultimately see in game. From many destroyers and several cruisers to even some designs for battleships and an aircraft carrier or two. But before I get into that sort of thing, there is a Dutch ship that I see fitting an underappreciated role in game namely the tier one ship in a pan-European tech tree. And for this lofty but underappreciated role, often filled by escort ships and patrol vessels, I found the Dutch sloop of war HNLMS Van Kinsbergen. This 1,700-ton ship was built in 1939 and was most often used as a patrol and gunnery training ship and served from 1939 to 1955. Looking over her specs, we have a pretty interesting Tier 1 candidate to kick off a pan-European branch. Main armament were four single mounts of 120mm guns. AA and secondaries, though useless at Tier 1, since no planes obviously, were two single 75mm guns, two dual 40mm Bullforce guns, and two dual 12.7mm guns. Top speed, 25.5 knots. So with speed similar to the German Hermelin and the Russian Orlan, but with guns of similar size to the Japanese Hashidate and a gun layout like the American Erie, she seems like a pretty solid ship to start off the line. Continuing the trend with cruisers, there are a few interesting and historically notable cruisers that could fit well in game. For example, one of the most well-known Dutch cruisers designs being the Java class. Originally intended to be a class of three cruisers, only two, the Java and the Sumatra, were completed and were completed in the 1920s to counter Japanese scout cruisers like the Chikuma class that we have in game in the colonies of the Dutch East Indies, modern day Indonesia. While they were quickly outdated and very much so by the time World War II kicked off, they both served in the early stages of the war in the Pacific and the Dutch East Indies. The Java herself will be sunk, kind of fittingly enough, during the Battle of the Java Sea in 1942 by a torpedo strike from the Japanese cruiser Nachi, while her sister Sumatra would serve into 1944 and she would be scuttled off the coast of Normandy as an artificial pier as part of Operation Overlord. Man, there really was a lot of scuttling going on back then, wasn't there? In terms of performance in game, these ships seem most likely at home in a tier 3 or 4 slot by my view, largely due to their decent speed but weak British-esque armor and her guns. Main armament were 10 single 150mm guns, which sounds impressive, but given how old the guns are, being World War I, even pre-World War I spec, the reload and shell characteristics are likely to be lackluster. AA armament would be 8 40mm Bullforce guns and 8 Browning 50 caliber machine guns. Top speed, 31 knots. To me, I see the ship as a solid low mid-tier light cruiser and a good DD killer at her tier, making her a solid in a support role by my view. While the guns may not have the best reload, the number of guns could probably make up for that. Immediately succeeding the Java was the ship that was originally supposed to be the third Java class ship, but due to increasing pressure from Japanese naval development, a new design of light cruiser was built to, as the flagship of the Dutch East Indies Squadron, and that would come to be known as the De Reuter, named after a 17th century Dutch admiral. Built on a relatively tight budget since the Great Depression was happening, this ship was widely considered an overall improvement compared to the Java regardless, although perhaps not as much as they would have liked. She's best known as being the flagship of the Allied force during the Battle of the Java Sea in 1942, where she was torpedoed and sunk by the Japanese cruiser Hagoro, taking the fleet's commander, Rear Admiral Carol Dorman, down with her and ending the ship's very short career. Performance-wise, we have a ship that could well work as either a Tier 4 or 5 depending on the balancing done to it. Main armament were seven 149mm guns, a dual turret and single turret 4, and two dual turrets aft, kind of like the Bliskavika in that regard to be honest. AA would be five dual 40mm Bullforce guns and eight single 12.7mm Browning machine guns. The biggest downside to this ship though is definitely the armor. You really want to hear it? British like you're guessing, right? And no, somehow it's even worse. Maximum belt armor? 50 millimeters. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, I am serious. Needless to say, it's best to keep maneuvering in this thing, or battleships would have you as a tasty snack, if they don't overpen you, that is. Top speed? 
32 knots. I know I've seen people say in the past that this ship would be a tier 4, but I think a tier 5 placement could possibly work, again depending on how the weaponry is balanced, as well as other characteristics working in his favor for such a placing. Moving on from those two, we have another rather unique class of cruiser, and I'll explain my air quotes, which you can't see, when I get to that. And regardless of what I think, I think this ship could be a huge addition to the game. Enter the Trump, I mean Trump class flotilla leader. Not in fact named after the family of a certain businessman turned politician that I think we've all come to know by this point in time, but rather after two father-son 17th century Dutch admirals, Martin Trump and his son Cornelis Trump. These two ships, Tromp and Jakob van Heemskerk, were completed in the late 30s and were built as destroyer leaders and a torpedo platform. The naming of the ships as flotilla leaders was also sort of a political move as well as indicative of their characteristics, since the Dutch population had a pretty large pacifist movement going on in the 1930s, and calling this ship a cruiser would likely lead to negative political repercussions for the Dutch government. At around 3,400 tons, these ships were pretty small, actually around the size of the destroyer leader design that we know as the Kabervosk, and were essentially large destroyers, kind of similar in principle to the Japanese Tenryu and Kuma classes, come to think of it. This all means that the armament is very interesting. Main armament were three dual mounts of 149mm guns, and she carried two triple 533mm torpedo tubes. Pretty destroyer-like already, eh? AA and secondaries were four 75mm guns, four twin 40mm Bofors guns, and two 20mm on the Tromp itself. On the other hand, the Jakob van Heemskerk had a very different armament on her. Hastily commissioned when the war began, she was refitted as an anti-aircraft cruiser rather than solely as a destroyer leader cruiser. The main guns on her were 10 British 102mm guns, much like those found on the British Tier 1 cruiser, the Black Swan, and no torpedoes. Other AA weapons included two dual 40mm Bofors guns and eight 20mm guns. But the differences in armament aside, there are two things that these sisters also shared. For one, their top speed of 32.5 knots, and again, their almost non-existent armor. Their best belt armor being 64mm. Seems like a thing with the Dutch cruisers, to be honest. This is definitely a squishy thing, especially since it's essentially a destroyer with a citadel. Tearing? My gut reaction is to say tier 5 for either one, while both would have very different styles of play if either one were to be implemented. Some might say tier 4, some might argue for 6, but I think you'd be pushing it. So I'd say tier 5 could be the best place to find this rather unique little ship. Finally, in the cruiser department, we have a ship that I actually mentioned before in my first video on the Pan American topic, and that would be the De Zeven Provencian class light cruisers, alternatively referred to as the De Reuter class, or as I'd call it, the De Reuter No Not That One class. These ships were the ships that the Dutch really wanted to build to counter Japanese light cruisers in the Dutch East Indies. However, they were still being built by the time the Germans invaded the Netherlands, and they were put on hold until after the war was over. Over. And during that time, they were thoroughly redesigned and upgraded for an anti-air role while still retaining surface capability. The two ships built, the De Zeven Provencian and the De Reuter, no not that one, were finally completed in 1953 and were often used as fleet flagships. And then, the connection to the Pan American video appears. As these ships were decommissioned in the 70s, they were sold to the Peruvian Navy, where they were renamed as the Aguirre and the Almirante Grau, respectively, and the latter of them became the last gun cruiser to serve in any navy in the world when she was finally decommissioned last year in 2017. So yeah, the De Reuter, no not that one, had really quite a long career under her belt. If you saw my Pan American video, I did mention the ship's performance, but for those who didn't, here's a rundown. Main armament were eight 152mm Bofors made guns with a 6 second reload. AA in her Dutch service were 857mm AA guns and 840mm Bofors guns. Armor, again, pretty weak, but still better than the Tromp at least, with 76mm of belt armor at best, and up to 125mm on the conning tower and turrets. Top speed, 
32 knots. I also did mention that I see the ship as either a tier 6 or 7, largely due to its DPM potential, speed, and protection, and I think I'd stand by that tier range, though specifically where I could still see that as up for debate, really. So, those are the Dutch cruisers for ya. So before I move on to the other notable list of Dutch ships, namely destroyers, there is the interesting topic of Dutch battleship designs, of which I found two. First, we have a Dreadnought battleship design from 1913 that I think could be a very interesting addition to the game, and quite unlike some other lower tier BBs in game already. This design was once again built in response to the rising development of the Imperial Japanese Navy at the time, and as such were originally proposed to be a class of nine battleships. Yep, nine. But then the number was brought down to a much more reasonable four battleships until the project was ultimately canned when World War I broke out and Dutch defense spending was reallocated elsewhere for obvious reasons. While several designs were proposed for the ship from German and British shipbuilders, they all share a lot of similar overall characteristics. Main armament were four dual turrets of 356mm guns, 14 inches, similar to those of a certain Japanese Tiabu battle cruiser that I think we all know. My name is wow. My name is yes. My name is <laughs> Yes, that one. Anyway, secondaries would be 16 150 mil guns and 12 75 mil guns with no smaller AA to speak of, at least in the original designs because well, let's be honest, it was 1913, nobody had even contemplated AA weapons at this time. Armor is alright, though not exceptionally strong, with 250mm on the belt, 300mm on the barbette, 50mm on the deck, and up to 300mm on the conning tower. Top speed, 22 knots. So this one is very definitely a unique dreadnought design that I can see as either a tier 4 or 5, once again depending on how it's balanced. Having the firepower of a Congo, but with speed just slightly faster than the New York, which, let's be honest, is not all that hard to beat because low tier US battleship struggles. So therefore this one, I'm also leaving up to debate as where this one could go in the tech tree. The other BB design is a bit more familiar, but with some interesting differences. Known as Design 1047, this was a battlecruiser design penned in by German designers in the 1930s to build a ship to hunt down Japanese heavy cruisers in the Dutch East Indies. Now, those with a keen eye might be able to draw a comparison between this ship and a certain ship that I happen to love in the game. Contrary to popular belief, this is not exactly a Scharnhorst clone. Main armament wise, they do carry the same main layout of three triple 283mm guns as the shiny horse, along with six dual mounts of 120mm secondary guns and an AA suite of seven dual 40mm Bullforce guns and eight single 20mm Ehrlichens. However, the most notable difference between the two appears here. No torpedoes. So yeah, this thing would likely not be the kind of brawler that the Scharnhorst is known to be. Armor goes up to 225mm of sloped main belt armor, 100mm on the deck, and up to 250mm on the turrets, and 150 on the conning tower. So, rather similar to the German mold in the armor department. Top speed, as designed, 34 knots. Man, that's quick for a BB. That's even faster than the Iowa, and up there with some of the Frenchies on their speed boost. So, I can see the ship as either a tier 6 or 7, kind of leaning towards the latter, particularly if the main guns can be reworked in a way that she could adapt a mid to long range play style, as opposed to the Scharnhorst typically German mid to short range gameplay style, which I don't see this ship being able to make work as well due to the lack of torpedoes. But overall, this is a very intriguing design that could make for a cool alternative to the much beloved Swiss Army knife of the sea that is the Scharnhorst. Also, there's the topic of aircraft carriers, of which there were three notable ones that served with the Dutch during and after the war. 
Easily the most notable of them all was the former Royal Navy Colossus class carrier HMS Venerable, which was sold to the Royal Netherlands Navy in 1948 and was renamed the HNLMS Carol Dorman and served in the Netherlands from 1948 to 1968, most notably taking part in the Western New Guinea crisis in 1960 before she was sold again to the Argentine Navy and was renamed the Veinticinco de Mayo and would serve in the Falklands War before finally being scrapped in the 1990s for parts. Now, my predictions about this ship may ultimately turn out to be premature since the British CV line was revealed in part, but we haven't seen the Colossus class yet, whether it be a tech tree or a premium. I don't doubt that we will see the Colossus class at some point, but this could lead to predictions that I may have about it, as well as the Carol Dorman and other ships of her class that served in navies around the world, from Canada to India to Argentina, being completely wrong by the time we actually get a Colossus class shipping game. In any case, here we go about this ship in real life. She had a hangar capacity of up to 52 aircraft, though nowhere near that many aboard during her active service. However, with the carrier rework coming, that point will be rather moot as there will be an unlimited hangar capacity when the rework hits the servers. AA weapons include 6 quad mounts of 2 pounders and 16 twin 20mm Ehrlichen mounts, though a later configuration replaced the Ehrlichens with 40mm Bofors guns. Top speed, eh, pretty slow, 25 knots. My thoughts lie in the ideas of the Colossus class and the Carol Dorman by extension would be a tier 6 or 7 ship as the aircraft that the ships carry were pretty modern and while they were slow, they were a fairly robust design for a light carrier. And I see a British built, and I definitely see the ship as a British built equal to ships like the Saipan and the Ranger in the US line. Aside from this one, there was another Dutch carrier named the Carol Dorman Dorman that came before it, though it was nowhere near as impressive. This Carol Dorman was a former Royal Navy Nirana class escort carrier and could be easily described as a British built cousin to the Bogue class escort carrier of the US Navy, and therefore it could work at tier 5 if they plan to implement it. With a hangar capacity of 20 aircraft, a top speed of 17 knots, and an AA armament consisting of two 4 inch guns, eight dual 20 mil guns, and four quadruple 2 pounder pom Palms, she definitely lives up to that comparison. Finally, though, we have two converted merchant ships that do meet the definition of a carrier, albeit barely, in that they could launch and recover aircraft, but if I'm honest, the numbers are laughable. These two ships, the Gedila and the Makoma, being converted from oil tankers in a similar vein to the British Rapana class ships of a similar principle, these ships only just barely make the cut as a carrier. Their hangar capacity? Four. Four aircraft. <laughs> Once again, I'm not kidding. On top of that, top speed, 12.7 knots. Oh, sorry! Yeah, I knew Shimakaze was going to jump on that one immediately. I probably don't need to go much further on that one, do I? <laughs> Yeah, even if they want to add CVs and numbers to this line, yeah, we're not going to see these ships, to be honest with you, as the performance of these ships are pretty laughable. Anyway, as our tour of the land reclaimed from the sea comes to an end, let's talk about destroyers. To get this note out of the way, there were several British DDs that were loaned to the Dutch during the war, including the G-Class... Uh, Oh hey, it's the HMS Garland again, this time renamed as the Marnix. Also, there was the Q-class Bankert, formerly the HMS Quilliam, the S-class Evertson, formerly the HMS Scourge, and the N-class Tierkides, formerly the HMS Nonpareil, and later the, hey, it's the Gajamada! I'm not even kidding, that actually is the Gajamada, the tier 7 monster of a pan-Asian DD. Well, nice to see a familiar face at least, even though we already have it in game, and it's a damn good destroyer. But anyway, let's get to the ships that were actually built for the Dutch Navy specifically. Let's kick things off with lower tiers with the Wolf Class Destroyer, a ship that could possibly work as a tier 2 candidate to kick off a DD line in my view. This was a class of 8 ships based on a British design but built in the Netherlands between 1910 and 1913. Though based on a British design, I can't help but compare these little 500 ton ships to ships like the German V25 class. <laughs> I wonder why. 
Main armament were four single 75 millimeter guns, which do bear a striking resemblance to the guns on the tier two premium DDs, the Japanese Takibana and the American USS Smith, along with two 450 millimeter torpedo tubes. AA, though useless at tier two, unless you fail division with a tier three ship and the matchmaking decides to punish you for it, were four single 7.92 millimeter machine guns. Top speed, 30 knots. While not particularly strong in terms of raw gun and torpedo power, the likely trump card of these ships could be fast reloading of its weapons, particularly torpedoes, much like the USS Smith in particular with its crazy fast 10 second reload on its torps. After World War I, these ships were getting quite old though, and by 1928 they were beginning to be replaced by the next Dutch DD to talk about, the Admirellen class. Based on the British prototype destroyer HMS Ambuscade, this class of eight destroyers would prove to be much more competitive against current designs of the time, and all of them would go on to serve in World War II, where they would all meet either tragic fates, or in the case of one, was scuttled in a grounding accident. So, yeah, whoopsie, and add another one to the scuttled list, damn. In any case, we have a ship that I see as a very good tier 5 candidate in my view. Main armament were four single 120mm guns, as well as two triple 533mm torpedo tubes. AA on later versions were a single 75mm gun, four 40mm Vickers AA guns, and some 12.7mm Browning machine guns. Top speed, 36 knots, pretty solid, and believe it or not, she actually had a plane catapult. So yeah, if that were to be modeled, that could be the first DD to actually have a plane catapult in game. So this one would be quite similar in the broad strokes to other British DD designs like the Acasta and the Pan-Asian John Wei at tier five. And needless to say, I think she'd be quite comfortable there. After the Admirellen class was an upgraded version called the Gerard Kallenberg class. This was supposed to be a class of four ships built in the late 30s and early 40s, but only two of them, the Gerard Kallenberg herself and the Isaac Sveers, were completed before the Germans invaded the Netherlands, and the Kallenberg herself was seized by the Germans and renamed the ZH-1 and would be scuttled in an attack against the Allied landings at Normandy in 1944. Man, you see what I'm saying about all the ships being scuttled? Jeez. The Isaac Spheres, on the other hand, had an even shorter career. After she was completed and served with the Dutch government in exile alongside the British, she would take part in the Battle of Cape Bon against the Italians in 1941 and escorted convoys. However, she would be torpedoed and sunk by a U-boat in November 1942. What's interesting here is that in a similar vein to the Tromp class, this class of ships also features two ships with a lot of differences in armament. The Gerard Kallenberg mounts five 120mm guns, a dual turret 4 and a dual and single turret aft, along with two quadruple 533mm torpedo tubes. AA were two twin 37mm guns and four single 20mm guns. The Isaac Spheres, on the other hand, while she also had two quadruple torpedo tubes, mounted three dual mounts of 102mm guns, one fore and two aft again. AA, two dual 40mm Bullforts guns and four dual 12.7mm Vickers machine guns. Top speed for the Kallenberg was 36 knots, while the Spheres was recorded to have hit 37.5 knots. Whichever version they pick, this could be an interesting class of ship that I see possibly fitting as a tier 6 or 7 depending on performance balance, though I do kind of lean more towards the 6 slot generally speaking, but there is still a fascinating case to be had for either one. The final two classes of Dutch gun destroyers came after World War II in the form of the Holland class and the Friesland class. Both of these ships, if they were to have one major adjustment possibly, could definitely make for a potent high tier gunboat DD. Built in the 50s, the two classes were rather similar to each other and served from 1950 to the 1980s, when almost all of them were sold to the Peruvian Navy, so hey, possibly another Pan American design. The reason why I see the ships as incredibly potent gunboats at higher tiers is rather evident when I look at the guns themselves. Even though these ships only mounted four guns, these 120mm Bullforce made guns, similar to those I talked about on the Colombian Navy 20 de Julio class in a previous video, have a reload time that would put the Japanese gunboat DDs to shame. Are you sitting down? I think you ought to be. These guns have... A 1.3 second reload. What? What the fuck? 
I am not even kidding, that's what they could do in real life. Translated, that's 45 rounds per minute per gun. And it's got four of them. Holy shit. <laughs> that's twice as fast as the Akiza Keys reload. <laughs> oh man. But, and there always seems to be a but with these kind of things. These ships had no torpedoes. Instead, these ships had two quadruple 357mm anti-submarine mortar launchers. So, uh, yeah. If they were to introduce submarines to the main game, U-boat captains would likely want to stay the hell away from these things, especially if they're modeled as historically based. And, oh yeah, and they also had two depth charge racks as well. <laughs> Now, AA would largely be covered by the main guns, along with a 40mm Bullforce gun, so not the best AA, but it could probably knock down a few high-tier planes if given the chance. Top speed for the Friesland, at least, was 36 knots, since if I bring up the speed for the Holland class, I think I might get an earful from Shimakaze again. Okay, fine. The Holland's top speed was 32 knots. Oh, sorry! See, I told you, she's on to me with that shit. Either way you slice it, these ships could be very interesting if Wargaming has the gall to put them in with historically accurate armament and not trying to put torpedoes on them. Tiering? I'd say tier 8 or 9, but whether these ships are incorporated or not would largely be based on, on a lot of factors to incorporate destroyers like this with no torpedoes per se, but anti-sub mortars, unless of course they try to put torpedoes in anyway. Though if submarines are introduced to the game, and they do choose to make it historically accurate, submarine skippers would probably not want to touch this thing with a 20 foot sterilized pole being held by somebody else. Alright, after that long spiel, let's head from the cold and rough North Sea to the warmth of the Adriatic and the Northern Mediterranean, where we discuss the last nation teased in the release, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Harken back to a time when Austria and Hungary were part of an empire that actually had a coastline along a major body of water. Of course, after World War I, Austria-Hungary ceased to exist as a country, and Austria and Hungary are landlocked countries to this day, where their coastline is now part of Croatia, which became part of Yugoslavia before becoming independent after Yugoslavia crashed and burned into civil war in the 1990s. While not nearly the strongest naval power in the Mediterranean, as Britain, France, and Italy definitely held on to those accolades, the Austro-Hungarian Navy did have some very unique classes of ships, from several interesting dreadnought and pre-dreadnought battleships, several armored and protected cruisers, and several destroyer classes, all of which I see as interesting lower tier ships. Let's kick things off by talking about some big guns in Austro-Hungarian battleships. Easily the most famous of Austria-Hungary's navy assets, these ships, especially the only dreadnoughts built for the, Aust the Austro-Hungarian navy, were built in response to ships from the rapidly growing Regia Marina from the Kingdom of Italy, which was becoming a European power in its own right by this time. But before I talk about that dreadnought class, let's talk about a rather under-discussed topic for this game. Pre-dreadnoughts. Namely, a class of Austro-Hungarian pre-dreads that could be an interesting tier 2 premium if given the chance, and at least it could give the Mikasa some competition. In this case, I'm talking about the Reditsky class battleships. Built just after the launch of HMS Dreadnought and commissioned in 1910, the three ships of this class were among the last pre-Dreadnought mixed armament battleships built in the world. Mostly used for bombardment duty and for showing of force missions, these ships were never going to be a match for modern Dreadnought designs, but regardless, all of them survived the war and were scrapped when they were handed over to Italy after the war. Being a pre-dread, these ships had quite an eclectic mix of guns on board. Main armament were four 305mm guns in two dual turrets, one fore, one aft. Secondaries were four dual turrets of 240mm guns, 9.4 inches, and 2100mm guns. And believe it or not, she actually had some AA guns, 40-70mm mounts, as well as three triple 450mm torpedo tubes. 
Armor up to 230 millimeters on the belt, 48 on the deck, 250 on the turrets and conning tower, and a top speed of 20 knots. If anything, this could be a pretty interesting ship as a tier 2 premium, maybe even tier 3, and at least I'd love to see the Mikasa actually have something to fight against. Now, let's move on to Austria-Hungary's only Dreadnought class that they built, the Tigatov class. Built in response to the first Italian dreadnought, the Dante Alighieri, this one was not only a match for her, but four of them were actually completed. Tigatov, Virbres Unitis, Prinz Eugen, no not that one, and Zen Esvan, which literally translates to Saint Stephen by the way. All four of these ships were completed by 1915 when World War I got into full swing, but unfortunately they couldn't show off their true potential as they were kept in port quite frequently due to heavy mining of the Adriatic Sea by the Allies and were only seen a few times for bombardment of Italian cities. Vivres Unidas and San Esvan were sunk by the Italians during the war, the former being sunk by Italian frogmen who mined the ship in port and the latter being sunk by an Italian torpedo boat, while the other two were given to the Allies and later scrapped. So performance-wise, we have a very powerful looking Tier 4 battleship by my count. Main armament were four triple turrets of 305mm guns for a 12-gun broadside equal to the Wyoming class and a certain Russian battleship that I dare not mention. Secondaries would be 12 150mm guns and 18 70mm guns. AA, laughable, only three 66mm AA mounts. However, she did also mount four 533mm torpedo tubes below the waterline, which if you see my Pan American video, uh, where I mentioned that very topic, I do question them putting that in, but I wouldn't put it past them. Armor, up to 280mm on the belt, 48 on the deck, 180mm on the casements. Top speed, slow, 20 knots, even slower than the US BBs at her tier. Overall, this is a very interesting class of BB that I see as an intriguing tier 4 with some unique gameplay characteristics compared to her contemporaries. Finally, there's a concept ship that was to serve as the follow-up to the Tigatov class, known as the Airsats Monarch class. Airsats meaning replacement, these ships were planned as an improved versions of the Tigatov class to replace the aging coastal defense ships of the Monarch class in the fleet. Four ships were ordered, but none were laid down before the outbreak of World War I in 1914. If these ships were to be brought to life in-game, however, we would have a very interesting ship that could possibly work as a Tier 5. Main armament were 10 356mm guns, so similar in number and size to the guns on the New York class, but laid out in an arrangement of four turrets, a triple and dual turret at each end, similar to the Italian Giulio Cesare. Secondary guns include 14 150 mil guns, two 47 mil guns, and two 70 mil guns, plus 20 90 mm AA mounts and six 533 mm torpedo tubes below the waterline again. Armor up to 310 mm on the belt, 150 mm on the casements, 340 on the turrets, 320 on the conning tower, and 72 on the deck. Top speed, slow again, 21 knots. So, all things considered, this ship looks like a pretty intriguing design and seems like it could be very comfortable in a tier 5 slot. Aside from some battle cruiser and battleship sketches that never saw approval, that really brings Austro Hungarian battleship development to a close because we all know what happened to Austria Hungary after the war ended in terms of naval development, which is to say, none ever again. Next though, let's move on to cruisers, where we have examples of scout cruisers, protected cruisers, and armored cruisers that bring some unique twists to the game if they were to be implemented. Starting with scout cruisers, the most interesting is definitely the Novara class, a class of three scout cruisers introduced to the fleet by 1914 and would see extensive service compared to other Austro-Hungarian ships, and even taking part in what would become the largest fleet action for the Austro-Hungarian Navy in the war, the Battle of the Strait of Otranto in May 1916. After the war, two ships were given to Italy and they served in the Regia Marina until 1937, and the third was given to France where she served in the French Navy until she was decommissioned in 1932. Looking over them, we have a very interesting ship for a potential tier 3 or 4 slot. Main armament were 9 100mm guns as well as 6 twin 533mm torpedo tubes, so a lot of torps on this thing. 
AA and secondaries include one 70mm AA gun and a 47mm secondary gun. Top speed, 27 knots. Not really matching in characteristics to many other ships you would compete against, this ship definitely presents a unique kind of style and challenge to the player in my view, and depending on weapons performance, it could be very interesting to see it in-game. Moving to the protected cruiser realm, we have the Zenta class, which I see as a possible tier 2 ship given her performance. One of the oldest ships I've yet mentioned, being commissioned in the late 1890s, these ships were largely built for long distance patrol cruises and would serve in the eight nation alliance against the Boxer Rebellion in China as well as World War I, where the most notably the Zenta herself would be sunk by a combined British and French squadron in the Battle of Antivari in 1914. Looking at her, I see an interesting potential for a tier 2 cruiser slot. Main armament were 8 120mm guns and two 450mm torpedo tubes. Secondaries in AA include 10 47mm guns and two 8mm machine guns. Armor, not really spectacular. She can be penned by pretty much everything. Top speed, slow, 21 knots. So despite the weak armor and low speed, this one could work as a tier two, largely due to her heavy gun armament and torpedo armament as well, making for a very unique playstyle at that tier, since she'd be the only tier two cruiser so far to mount torpedoes. Finally, though, we come to the topic of armored cruisers, which I suppose in many ways could be the equivalent to a pre-dreadnought version of a battle cruiser. While many navies had ships of these designs, we never have these kind of ships featured in game, and who knows, this could be as good a time as any to introduce them. And to me, a good ship to introduce this type into the game would be the Austro-Hungarian Navy armored cruiser SMS St. Georg, or St. George. Commissioned into the Austro-Hungarian Navy in 1905, she mostly served as a training and showing the flagship before the war began. When World War I did come around, she was mostly bottled up in port, though she did do some bombardment missions against the Italians in 1915, and did take part in the Battle of the Strait of Otranto in 1917. After the war, she was given to the British as a war prize and was scrapped in 1920. In a similar vein as pre-Dreadnought battleships, the San Georg had a wide variety of weapons on board. Main armament were two single turrets of 240mm guns, backed up by five single 190mm guns and four 150mm guns. AA and secondaries were one 70mm AA gun, as well as eight 70mm secondary guns, two 66mm and six 47mm and two 37mm secondaries, as well as two 450mm torpedo tubes. Armor protection includes up to 210mm on the belt and turrets, 450mm on the deck, and 200mm on the conning tower. Top speed, 22 knots. So this is definitely a very intriguing concept that I see being able to test the idea of dual primary weapon systems in game to run both the big guns and the mid-sized guns. And I see her as either a tier 3 or 4 depending on performance factors. And I swear I'm sounding like a broken record by this point in time when it comes to tier 3 or 4 ships. If the idea of an armor cruiser is to be tried, this could be an interesting opportunity to experiment with the concept in game. And this could be a good ship to work with the idea. Finally, let's discuss Austro-Hungarian destroyers, of which only one of them really stands out as a potential ship, likely a tier 2 or 3, namely the Tatra class. Commissioned beginning in 1910, six were built with two of them being lost in action. Three of them were given to the Italians after the war, and one came to France where they were scrapped in 1936. So looking at the ship, we have a very interestingly armed ship that could be a potential low tier gumbo DD. Main armament includes two 100mm guns backed up by six 66mm guns, along with two dual 450mm torpedo tubes. Top speed, 33.8 knots. As a tier 2 or 3 ship goes, this one could prove to be quite interesting. However, other than the Tatra class, that's really where the story of Austro-Hungarian DDs ends, especially when it comes to ships that could work in-game. There was a planned second batch of Tatra class ships with minor upgrades, but no real attempts at a proper successor would be contemplated before World War I ended and the Austro-Hungarian Empire with it. And that's also where our story ends for today for pan-European ships and the nations that we know will be represented. And man, was this a long one. Ho, ho, ho. 
And that latter statement regarding the countries that we know we represent it leads me to my next plan. To contemplate nations that could either be featured in a pan-European tree or in the game in general with their own potential branches. There's definitely a lot to discuss on that front, so there's definitely a lot of research that I'll be doing in my spare time, which I have, which I have very limited of since school is ramping up and finals are on the horizon. I will definitely give it my all on that front, but the limits I have might mean it'll take a while. I'll definitely try to keep you posted on it, but I'm excited to keep this trek through the under-discussed topics of naval history going, and who knows, maybe we'll see some of these ships or more in-game in the future as this branch gets introduced. In any case, feel free to discuss this topic in the comments below, and I'll be sure to read them if I get the chance. In any case, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Keep on sailing, my friends. Press the attack.
do you think they'll give us for this? Wasn't so hard. <laughs>